Hey yo, what's up guys? You've got Lightning here, back at you guys with another video. This time we are going over a Heimerdinger gameplay. Um, I just wanted to show this game because I think I've uh, versed enough Heimerdingers in the Season 8 preseason to to know sort of a bit about how to how to beat them now. They've become a bit of a pest, you know, with uh, whether they run Summon Airy or Arcane Comet or bloody, uh, what's it called, Kleptomancy. Um, <clears throat> Either way, they're a pain in the ass. If he runs Cliptomancy, he just gets so far ahead in items uh, quite early. Uh, it becomes really hard to deal with. Um, and the other two uh, runes, he's just got so much poke, and it's, it's just really hard to deal with him. Um, and you can get easily one-shot him. Um, if he if he's good and he predicts like where you're going to queue to your creeps, he can like uh, preemptively sort of throw his stun, and um, you know really get some good one-shots on you. So. Um, what I like to do is just, a lot of them will already have turrets placed out uh, sort of halfway in the lane. Um, so I, I guess the best thing is just to let him push you in, like what I'm doing here right now. He's just, I'm just letting him push me in. Um, the CS, I mean, it's not, there's not going to be a big difference right now, but I mean, I don't think I really fall behind in CS because he's just always shoving. Uh, there's no control at all. So look at that. I mean, I, I get a stun on because I didn't want him to sort of stun me. But I think he's still got the stun on me. Just lucky there was wasn't many turrets in range. So I think I just um, <clears throat> want to let him keep pushing me in. See, so look at this. Look at his CS. He's not even. He's only two or three ahead. But I've got him in a wave of five here right now. As, as long as I hit all these, then you know it puts me ahead in the CS department, right? So level three is where he gets all of his abilities, and he can really start to combo the shit out of you, right? So um, I just want to stay away from. Uh, hit the range of his E. What's this guy running? Uh, I don't know if there's a way for me to tell. I don't think there is in the replay. Oh, what? Uh, okay, I can come in. Sorry. Derp. So he's running uh, Arcane Comet. So he's just going for the poke, not the Clipmancy sort of scale I mean, rush item build, right? So <clears throat> he's playing for poke. He's playing for damage. Um, <laughs> no games with this guy anyway. But, um, okay, so we're at level four. The idea here is just to get through as much of the landing phase as possible, right? So we're at level four. Even on CS, that's the main thing. He still hasn't got heaps of damage on my tower, which is really good for me. Um, still only one behind, but and I've got a whole wave here, right? So as long as I can hit a couple of these, and he's probably going to try and get a stun on me with uh, when I go to Q, which he didn't do. He could have probably got a really good stun on me right there, but um, that's okay. Um, that would have that would have done quite a bit of damage, to be honest. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> so now I've got to get past his turrets. When he, when he retreats back like this, and his turrets are up here, it's a really good time to... Do I kill him here? Oh, that was a dirt flash. Yeah, I can't I can't kill him here. Let's go back. Because um, when, his, when his turrets are up here, and he's back here, he's on low health. How did he even get low health? Did he just take lots of minion damage? So how did he get low? Did I... I don't think I went on him. Uh, he took lots of minion damage here, so he's trying to just keep the shove on. But look how much damage he's taking, man. Like, um, his total health is 700. He's down to 400. You know, down to almost 300 health. So he just, I think he just really, uh, like, lost the, lost the lane for himself there. Because I'm chasing him. I'm not going to kill him. I, I think it would, I think if I really thought I could kill that guy, I, I should have flash stunned him. And then... And then when he flashed, I could have queued after him rather than flash like a derp. So mechanical error on my part there, but I think he made a really, really bad mistake there. And this is like, um, these guys are like, I'm not sure if this guy was diamond or like high plat, but um, this is on my main account. So it's, it's sort of like high plat, low diamond MMR. So <clears throat> he's, he's, these guys, I mean, in theory aren't shit right so he should have some idea of you know what he's doing and what lane control and things like that but um so i got a really good um i, I blew his sums right i blew his flash uh what's he running tp so does he tp okay he ran to lane did he yeah he ran to, he ran to lane so since i've got the minion advantage i can shove this in really easy um my runes i'm running instead of alacrity i'm running tenacity uh just simply because of his stun and look at their team right they got um like Jarvan's Sona Barris. So I'm taking the Tenacity Room. Now my first buy is going to be Hex Drinker. I think in this matchup it's worth delaying the the, the, the Triforce Spike just simply because... I'm going to speed this up guys. Simply because um, 
if you rush like a Sheen, he can just one shot you, and it's not fun at all. So I like to I like to rush a Hex Drinker. If it was um, uh, like season seven runes, I, I I like to rush Sheen because I can really out like outplay him. But I just feel like he does too much poke damage like with the Arcane Comet right now um, to not go Hex Drinker. Um, and it's, it'll save your life like you wouldn't even believe. If there was a uh, a way to see how much damage that saved you, like in lane or something, um, you know, it's it's quite a lot. And also, what this does also is it lets me withstand a lot of his damage if I do decide to go for an all in, um, if I get an opportunity to. <clears throat> What's he doing? Is he just sitting back because he he's scared or something? Or I mean, Nidalee's bot, my jungler's bot, so I don't know why he's playing so far back. See, so wasted a stun there. So I've got like a. Um, so it's it's like an eight second cooldown, right? Twelve, 12 second cooldown. Sorry. So I had like a small window where I could have gone in, but he's sitting right back in his in his turrets. He's play. It's quite smart of him to not come up to here to like uh, try and kill any minions because that's when I can beat him. But in in his turrets, this little triangle he's got going on there, that's when I don't beat him. So um, he's just playing far back. He knows I can probably have the damage to kill him. But if if I go into his like triangle here. Um, he definitely knows he can kill me, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, just let the minions push to me. <clears throat> Still winning in CS, got my Hex Drink, I'm in a pretty good spot, although he does have the Lost Chapter, which uh, in turn does make him quite squishy, so um, if there was a point where I wanted to fight him, um, you know, he is quite squishy to kill. I could I could one-shot him. It's just a matter of getting that, uh, that, that my combo off as well, before he's able to, you know, really just destroy me. I reckon if, if I went on him and he stunned me and put, used his, um, oh, if I got, uh, fog of war. Um, if he used his, uh, alt turret, he could probably win, win a fight, I think. As long as he stunned me and got his, all of his, like, if he had his three turrets up, like that. But, like, look at the Hex Drinker, I didn't even take that much damage. But now he uses his turret, it's a bit late, so. See, if I didn't have that Hex Drinker, I would've, I would've just died. And also I, um, fucked up my combo. Or did I just not have enough damage? I could have probably got a reset off his tower or something, but I get one now. Holy shit! Try up, yeah, baby. See, I mean, imagine if I had like a um, if I had like Sheen or something, I, I don't think I would have lived there. He he definitely would have killed me, one hundred percent. But even though uh, you know, I made a couple mistakes with uh, my positioning and the way I went in, uh, I could have dodged the stun. I could have got a reset off the tower and, and killed him. Um, and I still managed to take him out. And if I didn't have Triumph, I would have definitely died then. But Luckily I had Triumph. So anyway, we'll look at what happened from that kill. Um, you know, just waiting to that, for that level 6. Um, oh, you bastard. Waiting for level 6, getting an item first before we actually try and fight him. Like, the Hex Drinker is really good. I honestly believe in Hex Drinker versus this guy first. It'll... Like, once you have Hex Drinker, and if you're able to get a kill, you can just, like, really, really snowball. But if you get a... If you have, like, Sheen, and you're able to get a kill, I mean, it's... If you, if you go for, like, a... Um, for a Triforce Rush, you're still really squishy because he, he's going to have a lot of damage, so um, if you don't have the resists, it's really good to, well, it's really good for him kind of because um, it means you're squishy and it means he can one-shot one, one shot you with his combo. Although with Sheen, uh, I think it does grant a lot of more potential for outplaying with, um, you know, Q resetting off minions and towers and that sort of thing, or his, his turrets, sorry. Um, but I just like the Hex Drinker, it's more safe. And being a top lane champion, you know, you want to be a bit tanky. So Nidalee's ganking now. What's my cooldowns? She actually dies. To oh, she flashed. Yeah, my Q was on cooldown, unfortunately. I didn't get the Q reset. Just because I don't have a Sheen. I went now, Mix. Personally, I like... Um, I think Sheen is really good in this matchup. If you... If you're sort of like in the... Uh, in, uh, oh, sorry. If you're in the lead. But... Uh, I personally, I like... Uh, Hex Drinker. Uh, Merc Trades and Phage. Gives you that MR, the tankiness, and also uh, if you do get stunned uh, and you auto manage to auto attack him, it still gives you that movement speed to um, catch up with the Merc Trades to de uh, decrease the stun duration. So that's personally what I like. And being a top lane champion, you want to be a bit tacky, you know, not as squishy. Even though they've got like mostly AD. I mean, well, how am I doing his AP, right? If he's, this guy's building Gwinsu, so he's going to do a lot of magic on hit damage. Java, not so much, uh, but Sona has a bit of, you know, a little bit of major damage. So. Uh, you know, this heavy magic defense build isn't too bad. The only thing is if I get ganked, I'm, I'm pretty screwed. But he's always pushing me in. So, like, 
I don't, I don't think Jarvan's going to come top at all. The only time he could come top is if I was low and he came from the tribal share. But I don't think he will. So what have we got now? Uh, long sword. So I'm going for a phage, like I said. Yeah. I love the phage. Although Sheen is really good, but I just hate being squishy because if you if you make a mistake, see right now uh, I've got my you know most of my items, so I'm a lot stronger than him, and I just want to get him weak. So you know if I do decide for like a flash cube or something like that, I can uh, absolutely just destroy him because he'll be so low. So now he's got no choice but to back or well, or sit in the tower. He's got the he's got his region going, so he can stay in lane for a bit longer. But if I decide to engage again, he's basically fucked. He doesn't have enough damage to get through my hex drinker, you know, my ruby crystal, my mercs. Holy fuck! Oh, my vein's absolutely destroying this game. We're not going to worry about the vein. I just wanted to show more of this matchup, right? Because I, I know the time is just so obnoxious to play against. So this is what I like to do: is just you know, um, you know, wait for that level six. Uh, don't really fight him before level 6, because he just destroys you. Found a good opportunity to go in. Got him. Uh, we'll go back just to see what I did there. So everyone knows. Okay, so... Summon area... Uh, sorry, Arcane Comet. He uses E straight away. Um, that was a mistake by him, so straight away... Uh, I'm thinking I want to go in and fight him in the next 2 or 3 seconds. So I'm looking for that Q reset right now. I'll Q reset onto the minion. Get the stun. He placed his thing, but he's, uh, his turret, but he's got no uh, stun. So I'm free reign to go on him right now. Done. So there's key things you can watch out for in this matchup. I mean, the times you'll want to go in is A, if he uses his uh, stun on like the creep wave, which is really stupid for a to do. Like, uh, yeah, because it just gives you an open opportunity, <coughs> excuse me, to go in um, and, and fight him if you if you have the upper hand, right? So um, I've always said this against Heimerdinger. If he uses his, his E, uh, on the creep wave and you find an opportunity to go in, that's the best time to fight him. Because if he doesn't have that stun, um, you know, he can't just lock you in place and make you get hit by all three tower lasers. Uh, and his W for that matter. So he can't one shot you without his E basically. So go in <clears throat> when he's got his E down. And also don't forget you outscale this guy like so much. So I mean if we look at the CS and like gold, I mean I'm 5,300, he's 3,900. So I've got like a hex drinker on top of him. Yeah, my Vayne's just absolutely destroying this game. Fucking quadruple. Like, I mean, Vayne Soraka with the, uh, I think they got Arden Sensor. Uh, oh no, Redemption, okay. Interesting. Arden Sensor's not as dominant now, which is okay, but... <clears throat> so through, through just playing passive early and letting him push me in, just taking the CS free, <laughs> you know, that it comes to my tower, and then once we hit that level 6 to 8 power spike with the Hex Drink and the Mercs, you know, the Phage, you know, he just can't do anything. He doesn't have enough damage because he wasn't able to snowball off me at all or get any one shots on me because I didn't give them the opportunity to. That's the key thing. If he gets a kill on you and is able to get ahead of you, I think that's really dangerous even if you do get like a Hex Drinker or something because um, he's going to have a lot more damage uh, because of the kill from you, right? So, you know, Hex Drinker is less effective. But I think if... <clears throat> If you able, are able to get the Hex Drinker without having a death or without falling too far behind in CS, I think if you stay like within sort of 15 CS, um, yeah, that's roughly a kill, right? 15 to 18 CS is about a kill, right? So uh, if you're able to stay within that range, then you know you're doing fine. If you're not confident in the matchup, uh, you, you know you're doing fine. Whereas in this in this situation here, you know he was just constantly shoving shoving into my tower, and I just took every CS, you know, queuing all the CS under my tower um, for free, and that that got me ahead in CS. And now look, you know. Um, I'm, I'm 30 CS up. So ultimately, I mean, who wins? <coughs> you know, he had all this early pressure, but you know, ultimately I, I ended up winning. I should be going down to help my team, uh, but I focus the tower. I'm just like, yo, I'm going to split push. Because uh, Vayne... Well, get fucking outplayed. And I'm just pushing the tower. I sort of do this game. When you know a game is over, you're just like, uh, meh. You know? <laughs> Yeah, he just got no damage. He's level 10. You know, my little is level 9. I think she should be a bit higher than that, shouldn't she? Jarvin's, Jarvin's away. Okay. Maybe she's done alright. And I still managed to get this tower. <laughs> what the fuck? No one's even coming for me. I get that for free. And now I mean, if I had more mana, I could really just collapse on these guys. But I'll speed this up a little bit. Because, I mean, you've basically seen what I wanted to show you. But, I mean, why not close the game out, right? So... Flash Q, get a free kill. Oh, that's too fast. So where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? 
I TP back. Uh, I mean, base. Do I have TP? I do. So I have the option to TP back to lane if I or back into the team fight if I wanted to. Let's see what's going on here. I'll just click on me to keep it on me. Because it's all about me. Alright, speed it up, speed it up. Okay, we're in the team fight. Look at that fucking damage on Vayne, man. All I have to do is get a little bit more damage on Varus so Vayne doesn't have to go two balls deep under the tower to, to get the kill. And then that's, that's basically like a free kill. And that's, <laughs> that's so free. God damn. Yeah, I don't think there's much point in playing the rest of this, but. But, yeah, you know, I think I will. It's not long left. I'll just play it full speed. Zed tries to go full steep on me, but he can't. So even though I've got the Hex Shrinker and, like, so much, uh, like, MR, I decided to go straight for the Randoins because, you know, Vayne's just so fed. I don't really need to go Titanic Hydro or anything like that. I just gotta basically stay alive for the Vayne and just let her do her thing. And I'm sitting top. I could really just all mid uh, with my team, but I'm pushing top. There's no real reason for me to push top when I can just all mid with my team, especially the Vayne. I should be just with the Vayne. Um, you know, Vayne died. If I was mid, Vayne may not have died. So that's that's just one thing to take from this video as well. I mean, when you are hidden like this and your ADC is like fucking 18 and 5 like, at, at 20 minutes, like that's that's when you should really be with your Vayne. Okay, they surrendered. They surrendered. There we go. But that's that video guys, I just wanted to show the laning phase really, but I mean I decided to finish out the video because why not, right? But um, that's that, that's the Heimerdinger matchup. Um, so play passive the first uh, few levels. Uh, if you do get a jungle gank, uh, then, then you can obviously go in, but you got to be careful. Look at a summoner spell, some Heimerdingers take like exhaust or barrier heal or some stupid shit like that. And if, if you try to 2v1 him, uh, like in his creep wave or in his turrets and shit like that, and he's got barrier heal, uh, yeah, it's really hard to kill him and you could probably uh, outplay 1v2 uh, you and your jungler so watch out for that but also I think just playing if you're in a position where you don't need to sort of carry early um, which you know hopefully you're not uh, then you can then you can definitely wait till 6 and just farm up get the hex drinker and then you're definitely at a point where you can when you can all in him um, you know level 6 to 8 or whatever and, and or if he uses E on the minion wave that's another really good time to fight him but anyway guys I'm glad I was able to do another video this week um been doing some long hours at work time is a bit limited but that's okay i'm trying to put out as much as i can uh, so i will hopefully be doing another video tomorrow or the next day got a little bit of time off at the night time so should be able to push another one out for you guys with i've got some good gameplay but anyway um i hope you guys like that and we were able to take something away from the video and like and subscribe if you liked it and you want more and i'll definitely see you guys in the next video yeah, yeah.